This lesson deals with mesh current analysis. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 27. Using mesh currents instead of element currents can reduce the number of equations we have to solve simultaneously. Mesh current analysis is restricted to what are called planar circuits. A planar circuit is a circuit that can be drawn on a flat surface without wires crossing over. The resulting schematic may look like a series of window panes. Mesh currents are assigned to each window pane, usually in a clockwise direction. Take a look at an example. So here's a circuit that has 10 elements in it. We can draw it in a flat, two-dimensional space. And what you have here are sections that look like window panes, or you can think of them as meshes in a volleyball net. We're going to assign a current to each mesh, call this I1, I2, and I3, and these will become our unknowns. Now let's take a look at how we might interpret these currents. The mesh current I1 is flowing in element 3, element 1, and element 2. Mesh current 2 is flowing in element 5 and element 6. And mesh current 3 is flowing in element 8, 10, and 9. Now element 4 has a combination of I1 and I2. Element 7 has a combination of 2 and 3. This leads us to our first property of mesh currents. If the kth two-terminal element is contained in meshes x and y, then the element current can be expressed in terms of two mesh currents in the following way. The current I sub k is equal to I sub x minus I sub y, where x is the mesh whose reference direction agrees with the reference direction of I sub k. Let's take a look at a picture to see what that actually means. So here I've got a mesh current I sub x and a mesh current I sub y, and we're going to usually assign these in a clockwise direction. I want to solve for the current I sub k. And what this property is saying is that I sub k is equal to I sub x minus I sub y. I sub k is in the same direction as I sub x, and I sub y is in the opposite direction. So we're going to take I sub x minus I sub y. Now why would that be true? Well, the mesh current I sub x is also the element current in this element, and the mesh current I sub y is the element current in here. The current I sub x is equal to I sub k plus I sub y. So now we could solve for I sub k. So bringing this on the other side of the equation, we have that I sub x minus I sub y is equal to I sub k. So again, I sub k agrees with I sub x and disagrees with I sub y. We're going to add the one that agrees and subtract the one that disagrees. Let's look at an example. Suppose that I have six elements and I define the current in each of these elements do it arbitrarily, but just select a direction. Suppose that I know mesh current I sub A, I sub B, and I sub C. Can we solve for the currents in the elements I1 through I6? Here's the current I1 in element 1, and it actually is in the opposite direction of I sub A. So I1 is equal to minus 10. Current I2 is here, and it's going to be I sub A minus I sub C. So it's going to be 10 minus a minus 3, or 13. The current in here is going to be I sub A minus I sub B. So it's going to be 10 minus 5, or 5 amps. The current in element 4 is in this direction, and that's going to be I sub B minus I sub C. So 5 amps minus a minus 3, give me 8 amps. I5 is in the same direction as I sub B, so just equal to 5 amps. And then lastly, element 6 is in the same direction as I sub C, but that's equal to minus 3 amps. So knowing three mesh currents, we could solve for currents in six elements. Just like before with our node voltages, knowing the mesh current is the least information we would need to solve for element currents. This is how we're going to do mesh analysis.